Today, again, we're going to be talking about the name Jesus. And I want to read to you from Psalm 96, verse 2. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. You may say, but I can't sing. <laughs> well, the Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So go ahead and sing anyway. You may want to do it privately <laughs> rather than while you're with your family, but still go ahead and sing unto the Lord. He will think you sing beautifully. Miss Faye, pray for us quickly. <laughs> The reason he says that is my family asks me not to sing in their presence, <laughs> but let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. And we thank you that you sing a song over us. Yes. We praise you for that, Lord. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. You know, again, I want to tell you how important it is for you to praise the Lord. It's important for you to pray a prayer, but it's good to start your prayer with praise. In fact, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You see, Jesus said it's important to praise the yes. Lord, praise God for the things that he does for us, praise him for the fact that he's with us, Thank him for the fact that he loves us. Yes, and you does. can just keep on naming lots of things that you are to praise him for. Yes. So as we study today, keep that in mind and just take time out to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Revelation of the Word with host Dr. and Mrs. M.E. Neal. The name Jesus was given to him just to help him fit in to the human race. It was a name that was like other people's names. He looked like a, nor a normal human being. He looked without uh, any great handsomeness about him. So he definitely fit in to the human race. For he was 100% human as well as 100% God. But a lot of people trying to come up with a last name for him say that Christ is his last name. Well, I really don't know what his last name was, but it was not Christ. Christ was a position that he held. He is Jesus Christ. And that name means the anointed one. Peter talked about on the day of Pentecost that it was only by the resurrection and the ascension did the person Jesus actually properly take on the name Christ. He, at that point, became Christ in the full sense of the word. Miss Faye, read to us from Acts chapter 2, verse 36, please. Acts 2, 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now I would like for, do, for you to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Now that means that he is in control, that he is a ruler, and that we as his followers are to make ourselves subservient to him. He is to have control over our lives. We are to ask for his direction as we go through each day. Now I would like for you to say Jesus is Christ. Jesus is Christ. This name means that he has authority as the anointed one, that he is the Messiah. 
So it's important that we realize that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. But he had to become Jesus before he could become Lord and Christ. Again, he was given this name of Christ to denote his authority, to show that he was in control. He was also made to be the Messiah that the Old Testament had talked about. That's the same word that refers to his being Christ. So the chief significance of the name Jesus lies in the meaning of his name. And the meaning of his name, which is Yeshua, means salvation. And that's exactly who the Lord is. That's exactly who the Christ is. He is the means of our salvation. He is both Lord and Christ as far as redemption is concerned. So the name Jesus then can actually mean he's our Savior. He's the world's Redeemer if the world would just believe on him. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Miss Faith. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, most people in the world today believe there is some kind of afterlife. Some people believe in reincarnation. I'm glad that's not really the case because the world is seemingly getting worse and worse, and I would hate the thought of coming back to this world after I've passed on to an even worse world. But anyway, the people who believe there is an afterlife have looked to different gods or different people in order to place their faith in those things. But the scripture, which is the only true authoritative word that exists, the word of God, says there is only <coughs> salvation through Jesus Christ. There's no angels that can save you. There's no humans that can save you. There's no other forces that can save you. Even nature cannot save you. Only the one individual, Jesus Christ, is Lord. He is Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. And no other means of acquiring salvation than through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only Savior of any human being. I hope and I think that's clear. Jesus is the only individual who can save you or your family or any other human being. Jesus is the only means of salvation. He is the only one that can rescue us from our times of trouble. He is the only one that will deliver us from our, out of situations that are unpleasant. And he's the only one that can really give us health. You say, but I take medicine and I go to the doctor. Well, I do too. But even so, Jesus is the only healing process or individual that we can, that we can turn to because he will touch us and help us whatever the doctor said or whatever the medicine's supposed to do to do what is supposed to be accomplished by it. He is the healer, the medicine, and the doctors are just channels through which Jesus can work. By his stripes we were, by his stripes we are healed. So healing really comes from Almighty God. If you cut your finger and you put medicine on it, you put a bandage on it, that's great. If you go to the doctor with it, that's okay. But know that the healing process really is only through Jesus Christ. He also has a 
character about him that we should pattern after. We need to be as much like Jesus as we possibly can. We are to follow in his footsteps, look like him, talk like him, act like him in every way. He has brought to us heavenly happiness. We cannot really muster up happiness on our own very well. But Jesus can give us a happiness that nothing on earth can possibly give to us. So look to Jesus for happiness. We like to think of ourselves as being self-sufficient, but we're really not. Jesus is our power source. He will give us power, the ability, the equipment to do whatever we need to do each day. And what we need to do each day is to minister in whatever way God has called us to minister. So he will give us that ability to do what God wants us to do. He is also eternal. And because Jesus is eternal, and because we believe on Jesus, then we become eternal as well. We may pass away here from this earth. We may be buried in the ground, but the real true us will be very much alive. We will be with Jesus, and we will live forever and forever. As I indicated last week, there will be a point when our spirit man and our physical man will be reunited and we will become in glorified form. But even before that happens, our spirit will already be with Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he will bring to us anything and everything that we need if we are genuine believers in him with the intent of carrying out what God has called us to do. I think that we could say it this way. The gospel is good news, and that's Jesus. He is good news. And our Christian faith is based on the fact that Jesus came into this world and lived as a human although he was divine. He ministered while he was here on earth, but he died. He was put in a tomb, and he rose again, and he then ascended into heaven, and he's also coming back for us. So all of this put together is what makes up the basic doctrines of the Christian belief. Now, People try to explain Christianity away. They try to do away with it completely, but it will never happen. Jesus Christ is a living reality, and he will see to it that his message, that his life was not in vain. The people who believe on him will be saved and will spend eternity with him. Hallelujah. So he ex accepts us into his very body. He's the head of the body. We believers make up his body. He will be a part of us and we'll be a part of him if we just accept him as our savior. He does not make us accept him. He does not force himself upon us. He's a gentleman in every way. But he wants us to accept him because it's for our good that we accept him. He's already the son of God. He's already in heaven. He's already seated at the right hand of God. We are the ones who are, shall we say, struggling. Maybe, maybe that's too strong a word but we are the ones that don't have perfection here on earth. But through him, we can acquire everything that we need. For those of us who accept him as Savior, he saves us. He delivers us. 
He protects us. He heals us. He keeps us and preserves us. He gives us the ability to do well. Jesus went about over the face of the earth when he was here doing good. And we can do exactly the same way through him. We can be made completely whole in every way, spirit, soul, and body. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Jesus and Jesus alone is exclusively our Savior. Hallelujah. He saves his people from their sin. Now, who are his people? Well, I think 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 tells us who his people are. Miss Faith? 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We are a chosen generation. That means God chose us. He chose anybody and everybody and made it possible for everybody to be saved. So the whole human race could be considered a chosen generation, but not everybody accepts him. Not everybody believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. But for those who do, we have been chosen of God. You may think you have chosen Jesus. You did accept him. But even before that happened, actually even before the foundation of the world, when Jesus was slain as a lamb before the foundation of the world, you were chosen. God had you in mind whenever he planned the plan of salvation. So we are a chosen generation. We accept that fact that Jesus died for us and that fits us into this chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Folks, we are priests and kings. We are of the royal family of God. We are the priesthood of God. We no longer have to go to anybody other than Jesus, who is our high priest, in order to present our needs or our failures to him. We can go to him. He is our high priest. But we have the right to make intercession for ourselves based on faith in the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, are we a holy nation? Yes, we are. We are still in this world. We are a group of people that set apart from everybody else because we are holy in the sight of God. Other people are not holy. God loves them. God wants them to become holy. But regardless of what continent we may live on, we as believers in Jesus Christ make up a holy nation that's separate from the physical nations, the geographical nations here in this world. We are a holy nation. And our, our purpose is to show forth praises to him. Remember, we started the program off by talking about the importance of praising him. Even through song, we are to praise him. And he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We no longer stumble around trying to find our way because the light has shined upon our path. And we may not see a long distance down the road, but we see the next step that we should take because the light of Jesus Christ, the light of Almighty God is shining upon our path and so we can see the next step to take and then the next step and then the next step and it turns out that we are able to be on the right path that leads us to the very throne of God because that light is shining upon us and ideally that light is shining through us. We are to reflect 
the light of Jesus everywhere we go and in everything that we do. So I think we can say it this way. When we believe on Jesus Christ, we become a part of the family of God. We are to be made sons and daughters of Almighty God. We're adopted into that family. Jesus Christ becomes our elder brother. Hallelujah. So we're definitely kin to him. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We become a part of the race of God. Now, there's just really one race here on earth, and that's the human race. We're different from place to place, from individual to individual, but we are still members of the human race. But whenever we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become separated and a, a spiritual race as well as a human race whenever we believe on Jesus. We can affect the lives of other people by helping them to become holy, to become sacred, to dedicate their life to God so that they can be pure in his sight. And that means we'll live a good moral life here in this world. There will be times that situations will come along, but with the help of Jesus, we will get through those situations and be blameless regarding those situations because he has already paved the way, he's already paid the price, and it's just as if we have never even sinned. So we become consecrated to Almighty God because of Jesus living within us, because we were chosen. Even while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Now it talks about the fact that we're a peculiar people. And we usually think that word means weird. And I guess in a sense it does even when it applies to us as Christians. Because again, the majority of the people in this world are not believers in Jesus Christ. And so we're strange in the sense that we've got the Savior of mankind living in us, directing us, helping us day by day. That makes us totally different from the rest of the people of the world. We are peculiar by the fact that we were purchased and we were placed in a group of people that are of one mind, one accord. We are in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. It is from this position then that we publish, that we celebrate, that we praise the one who had bid us to come out of darkness into his marvelous holy fire. Hallelujah. So again, I ask, who are his people? Well, let's go to Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, Miss Faith. Titus 2, 14 says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, most of the scripture that we use here on this program come from the King James Version. As you well know, there are many different translations of the Bible. I have found that the Amplified Bible is a good source to make uh, different verses very easy to understand. So I'm going to ask Miss Faye if she'll read Titus 2.14 again, this time from the Amplified. Titus 2.14, who gave himself on our behalf that he might redeem us, purchase our freedom from all iniquity and purify for himself a people to be peculiarly his own. People who are eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good and filled with beneficial deeds. So this verse tells us what God had in mind for us that we might be different from the rest of the people of the world, that we might be eager and enthusiastic about living a life that is good, a life that is filled with benefits and deeds. Hallelujah. That's what God wants for us. 
God wants us to be blessed. It's his good will and his good pleasure to bless us in abundance if we will just allow him to. So let's do it. Amen. Do you have prayer requests? Please call or write to us. You can support Revelation of the Word by first praying for God's anointing to be on this ministry. If you feel led to send a financial offering, you can send your gift to Revelation of the Word Ministries, 205 Liberty Lane, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. Everyone is invited to visit Revelation of the Word Church. Sunday service begins at 10 in the morning. Call, email, or write to Neils for more information. Now, back to Revelation of the Word. Faye and I are so blessed to have this opportunity to share the gospel with you. We appreciate you so very much. It's great when we're out at the grocery store or wherever, and somebody says, hey, I've seen you on television. I, I've listened, I've watched, and you have ministered the Word of God. That is a blessing to us. Well, believe you me, it's our desire to always be a blessing to you. Yes. We do our best to teach and preach the Word of God as God wants it taught. We do our best to teach it the same way that if Jesus we're standing here in bodily form, that that would be the way that he would teach it as well. We do that. So we appreciate you tuning in week after week to this program. I want to say a special thanks to WHTN for allowing us to be on the air. Yes. This station is a godly station. You will find programs on this station that will bless you, not, not just our program, but many, many programs that will really touch your heart and help you learn the Word of God. So I would recommend that you keep your TV on this particular channel just as much as you possibly can. I believe you will grow in the Lord if you do that. I think you will get answers to your prayers as you praise Him and as you follow His teachings through different ministries that truly teach the Word of God. I think you'll find that you will live in health much easier and much better if you follow the Word of God as taught on this particular station. So if you have an offering to give, give it to this station. And remember folks, God loves you and we do too. We really, really do. You can join the Neals here on WHTN every Saturday at noon, or you can visit Revelation of the Word Church. Contact the Neals for more information.